Now, bringing you the very best in New Hampshire-based local music on IPMNation.com and 100.1 The Planet, this is Local Outbreak. That is Beach Zombies. The band is Dead Harrison, and we are playing that for a specific reason, which we'll get to in a moment. And we have uh, three very special guests with us. Uh, of course, uh, Eleanor and uh, Spelfi and Andre from the, and I always say it wrong, the Midnight Creatives Collective. Did I get it right? Yes. And uh, it's okay if you call us creatures. I, I don't know. Is that is there a Facebook group w- with creatures yeah. in it? 
Is that why I'm confusing it? Well, there might be. There might be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, welcome. And of course, Andre also in the band uh, Dead Harrison. So we were looking for a song to play. And um, Beach Zombies was suggested. And we should talk about why. Why? 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 Why is Beach Zombies relevant? Why is be- because tonight we have a cool little thing happening at Terminus Underground where yes. we're doing a little uh, film feature and I uh, got a band playing that's got a little Walking Dead theme going on too. The uh-huh. Negans. The vegans. The Negans. <laughs> oh, there might the be vegans. I was there say, might be vegans. Well, I was going to say hey, that could be a band vegan, name too. So. There say, might be vegans. A lot of musicians are vegans these days. Well, you so, got to have that healthy lifestyle. That's right. So they're called the Negans. The Negans. N e g a n. Yes. Yeah, okay. It's like Negan in the Walking Dead show. You know the one with. Steel. See, I've never, I've never seen an episode of The Walking Dead, oh. so I don't know that, who this Negan is. This Negan character is a very interesting antihero. Oh, <laughs> why, why an antihero? Is is uh, Negan? Uh, I think controversial it... in some way. Yeah, yeah, kind of, probably to an extent. He liked the use of violence to get the uh, the ends and the means done. But gotcha. um, yeah, I mean, it's basically the way that it turns out is like they're both just two separate groups that are figuring out how to operate and run in the new world after, you know, post-zombie apocalypse. And they just have their own ways of doing things. And uh, there was a little... Uh, confrontation that happened between the two groups okay and a lot of bad things happened and a yeah. lot of and then uh things kind of took a turn a little bit but if you're not familiar with the walking dead uh kind of storyline you, you wouldn't know that terminus is also part of that so terminus i had no idea underground uh was a place of sanctuary oh. for people <laughs> trying it- to escape the zombie apocalypse Okay, but, but it wasn't a, a place of sanctuary, well, really. A little, little <laughs> twist there that if you didn't follow all their rules, you would end up in a bus and they would eat you uh, and serve you to the rest of the commune. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. We're not going to do that. We do have a resident cannibal, though. <laughs> yeah, agree. You do. <laughs> that's, that's terrifying. He's a leather worker. Oh, all right. So stay away from him if he's hungry. Yeah, All right. pretty much. <laughs> angry and when he's hangry. <laughs> so what exactly is going on tonight? I mean, you, you, it, so you're filming a video with uh, zombies or what? Well, we have our first movie night. So um, we're actually combining music and movie this tonight um, for a film premiere. And it's a Silent Hill parody with puppets oh okay so um our friend ryan lockhart is the filmmaker and the performer and she has created this entire film based on her series of gameplay foul which is what it's called very popular youtube gamer series where she goes through and does gameplay with her puppet and the silent hill backdrop okay so it's for well, that's for like it's different games per episode yeah different games but um that's kind of the concept, and she's created this whole one-hour-long movie um, as her coming-out experience as a trans woman. So we're supporting her film as an art, and she's also performing. She's an amazing rapper. And oh, no kidding. And she's going to be doing several performances of some rap battle songs. And, um, yeah, so that's part of it. And we also have the uh, the Negans going to play, too. So okay. it's a punk rock, punk horror kind of night. Okay. Um, so grab your popcorn and candy and come over. <laughs> we got to get, so, so she, w- what's her name again? The filmmaker yeah. is Ryan Lockhart. Ryan Lockhart. Yeah. She's on IMDb. We um, got to, we got to get her on the yeah, show. Yeah. You got to get her on the show. sounds like she's, she's got fabulous. a fascinating story. Oh yeah. Oh, she's an amazingly fascinating woman. She's, she's also yeah. an educator and an activist and she's just a really like, just very wonderful person altogether. Yeah. Um, I, I absolutely suggest getting her on the show. Yeah, yeah. No, she sounds fascinating. Um, has she done other things, do you know, with puppets involving puppets? Or is this like Yes, a- so she does it um, mainly on her YouTube channel. And this is oh. going to be the first time she's presenting a live presentation. Um, she doesn't have the puppets tonight because they're very, like, they're constructed very, um, like, Hollywood standard. So they're very important. Yeah. She doesn't have any road puppets. 
Oh, okay. but it'll just be her and her amazing energy and performance art. So I think um, you guys, if you could come and make it out, anyone can come. It's ten dollars suggested donation. Normally we do a fifteen dollar cover, but this is something different we're trying. So I think it's going to be fun. Now, um, do the Negans? Uh, why? Why them? Is, or or did it just work out that way? Or, well, do they, or do they have some sort of connection to the whole? Concept? You, there's a, there's a big question. connection. Um, Jimmy from the Negans and Ryan are besties yeah, in real life. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, Jimmy uh, does uh, extra on Ryan's show on a on a regular basis. He's oh, a guest okay. star yeah, he on her too. show. And he does videos with her and stuff too. It's oh, okay, okay, very cool. Very. Have cool. Have you ever seen Jimmy or the Negans before? No, I don't think so. Oh no. goodness, you're you're gonna be in for a treat. They're oh, very yeah. fun. Yeah. Very high energy. It's you know kind of old rock, old rock punk. You know. Okay. Style, right. Um. So there's a lot of woes and yes. Yeah. And jumping around. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Um. We should talk about, too, uh, you know, Jenny and I were there the other night because uh, she's got her art uh, there. Her amazing <laughs> art. See, it's like you're, it's, oh, oh, wow, you're I'm like hiding in the corner. You're way <laughs> in the corner over there. You're not, you're not, you're not. Now you're on the here. spotlight, Jenny. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm literally. I try to I'm, stay out of it. <laughs> literally, I'm like, where'd she go? <laughs> your video that I posted with all your art got 83 views. Oh, wow. That's yeah, crazy. That's organic views. That means 83 people were looking at that little show. And um, what we mentioned on that clip was that Jenny is a healthcare advocate. Mm -hmm. And um, that's very important to people, yes. knowing how our healthcare industry is not advocating for us. Right, right. So, Imagine that, trying to get healthcare to be healthcare. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> Imagine. The care yeah. in quotations. <laughs> yeah, that comes out a lot in the art, too. Uh, and yeah. especially in the collection that you guys have, which are like my darkest pieces. Yeah, <laughs> those dark pieces are dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like those are things of nightmares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My daughter <laughs> loves them though. She's like, this is like the back rooms. Oh, that's very. <laughs> oh, cool. no kidding. No kidding. Oh, very. Oh, cool. that's crazy. Very cool. Yeah. Now, is that something you do every month? Every month, you have you feature a different artist, or? Yeah. Uh, how does that work? Like, how do you um, do people submit, or what's what's the process like for deciding? It's pretty loose right now. Um, we, you know, we have had people that have asked us. We have had people that we've sought out. Um, people that just are like, yep, I'm putting my art on your wall. This is the coolest thing ever. Because we do an 80-20 split consignment if something sells. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do a number of promotional things to get the art seen and recognized, not only through the Terminus shows and you know our open house every Tuesday where people can come. We allow the artists to set up their own gallery showing. Yeah. And, um, you know, they can do basically whatever they want. They can teach art classes. They can, you know, have a, a reception. They can auction off their art at the at Terminus. Yeah, so there's a lot of opportunities. Excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, we should also talk, too, uh, more broadly about what, what you do um, at uh, the, the Midnight uh, Creatives Collective because, um, you know, we have a lot of musicians who listen to the show. Hi, musicians. And, we uh, want you. <laughs> yeah, talk about that. Talk about what, what you do. With, uh, with musicians and in terms of oh, well, promotion. And we do a lot of different things, but one of the main things that we do is we run underground music, live music a few times a month uh, in a little place that we call Terminus. And that's Andre's a little spot there that he graciously opens up for us, living room style, for us to be able to put on shows. Yeah. And but I, the, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, you know we open up the, the business bar, which is Eleanor's space. Yeah. And business bar in quotation. Yeah. <laughs> bar, no alcohol yeah. Yeah. served. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. But BYOB, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, and then I've got the, the green room um, for the, the musicians. Um, and yeah, we, we treat our, our bands like family. Yeah. We're very hospitable. Our key, like the key phrase, if you were to, put us in an SEO search would be hospitality. Yeah. And that's, uh, we've had over 60 bands since we started um, perform at Terminus um, over the last six months. And every single one of them says, oh my God, thank you. We cannot believe you, A, pay the bands every time, serve them dinner, food when they're there, fill a fridge filled with their favorite beverages, 
and they have just a genuinely good time being so intimate in this environment with their fans, knowing that energy is like being built in a small space, Mm -hmm. but it's really ideally what everyone seems to be wanting these days. Yeah. So it's really nice to be able to do that. Yeah. I think, I think the end goal of it is like to also try and provide a place for musicians to be working with other musicians that, um, for new ideas, Mm -hmm. seasoned people learning the craft of not just like the, the performance section of things, but the, also the behind the scenes. Like if you want to do things to push out farther, like these are the things that you have to start taking care of yourself with. Mm -hmm. And like, whether it's signing up and being a member of ASCAP or BMI, there's little things that can help benefit you to like really make it into something that now it's not just, you know, being a garage band anymore. Right. You're trying to push yourself to an actual professional place. And that's what we're trying to do here is to like take the craft seriously. Don't just, don't listen to everybody else that's just like, oh, musicians are just like, you know. Or that the scene isn't united. I don't like hearing that because we know how to unite it. It is mm-hmm. about, you know, doing what we're doing and inviting and welcoming as many people in the underground scene that we can right. to take part. So this is, you know, where the community is actually happening. And there's other places too, like other um, collectives have started to pop up, which is really awesome. And we like to collaborate with just about everybody. Yeah. Because we're all about like, you know, seeing it as a future perspective. Like, you know, we're going to be those boomers again. I mean, not again, but eventually. (laughs) (laughs) And so who are we teaching and what are we teaching for the next people to, you know, be able to rock and roll and keep rock and roll alive? Yeah, and it's basically set up like a nice little membership. Like you would have a gym membership or something, but you get to come in yeah, and work with members. people. You have you have a place to come and do things that kind of like separate you from the world. And like sometimes you try to do the stuff at home, but there's always a distraction. Yeah, mm-hmm. This it's gives a you a place to actually go and work on your craft. Yeah, Work on the behind the scenes, bring your laptop, hook up to internet, make pictures and pages and set things up work on a website have somebody that can help you work on a website to like get things going and what's my next step you know the place to have those little conversations that so yeah and i mean and even with terminus like i want to use it as a place where um there's uh katie red who is a sound person that has been working with us and does a great job and we were just having a discussion of having a class for bands to come in so that they can learn how to communicate with the sound person what okay. they need on stage so that they can get past the things of, uh, I got to deal with the grumpy sound guy. Well, if you spoke the language and you understand what a sound person is trying to Always understand, you would be able to <laughs> increase your performance because you were able to communicate the things that you needed to sound good for yourself on stage. That is a fantastic idea. Yeah, so, we'll so it's little, little things like that. like that. Now, that specifically, though, is because nobody, I, I don't know if there's a course at Berkeley where they, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so, where they teach how, no, to, how to deal with, with is, a sound guy, but, but I mean. at this level. <laughs> but right, that's what I, yeah, that's the thing, because, yeah, that's, that's a. It's all textbook stuff at Berkeley. It's well, never that, well, that, well, that's on. what I, but uh, that's what I mean, though. Like, actually, you know, because you have to. It's not so much the technical stuff when you're dealing with a sound guy at a club. It's, you know, the, the personality aspects of it that, that can come into play. And uh, there's a fly in here. That's unusual. Oh, no. um, but uh, probably because we were talking about zombies. <laughs> yes, yeah, some yeah. of the rotten flesh has <laughs> made it with us. Jeez. Our reputation is preceding us. <laughs> <laughs> I heard somebody on the morning show the other day saying there was a fly in here. So it must be the same fly. I, I, I've never seen a fly in here. Um but uh, no, I think that's that's a fantastic idea. I don't know anybody around here who's doing anything like that. Um, We're doing lots of things no one else has even thought of. <laughs> I yeah. went into a um, women's empowerment group for women CEOs this last week, and I tried to do an elevator pitch for what all we do. And it really, I don't have a short way of saying any of what we do because we do a lot. Yeah. But it's all like really beneficial stuff. Like 
it's next level stuff. So it's like we've got the um, School of Rock in Nashua now, and they're teaching all the young kids. And I feel like we're just that next extension. Oh yeah. For that. No, that makes sense too. Yeah, because you know, obviously, um, you know, especially for people. I mean, there's probably a lot of musicians around who, you know, they're, yeah, they're not gonna <laughs> they're not gonna go enroll at the School of Rock, but they but there's things that they they need to know that maybe part of the challenge, though, I would imagine is there's a lot of musicians who don't know that there's things that they need to know. You know what I mean? Like, and that's the and that's the thing is trying to you know pass that information along that people aren't thinking about right and it's like you know she threw me in and made me do a class a couple weeks ago <laughs> to be Throw like <laughs> I'm gonna make a class you're gonna teach some people how to like learn to run our soundboard and it but it also like put a thing like for musicians to learn how to actually like work a soundboard yeah to the things to look at to like whether it's setting up monitors and setting up stage things and and having levels and where to look at and your EQ settings and mm -hmm. it there's a lot of little things that it only makes your craft that much better that you know these little behind the scene things because that's right. going to help you just dial in what you're looking for and like say your sound. Yeah. And if you have a better understanding of what the sound person goes through Exactly. You know. Yeah, and we have a very, you know, it's not a club that we have. It's a private space where we open it up. It's not very big. I mean, it's bigger than the studio, but we have specific, like, sound needs for that room. So it's really nice to be able to, you know, teach people how to hone in the sound, mm -hmm. even in a small space. Yeah. And make it sound phenomenal. Well, what I tell everybody, I'm sure you've heard me say it, is uh, when you walk into Terminus, I still remember walking in there the first time. It's like another world. Oh, yeah. And, it's and even I, wet better now. Andre just tweaked some things. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. And I had no idea about the whole with, uh, is it Walking Dead? Yep. The I, walking. I don't know any of these zombie things. But uh, I, I had no idea about that part of it. But even just not knowing that, like just walking into that room, it's like, wow. There will be no zombies tonight. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. anyone's scared. <laughs> yeah, zombies are, uh, are bad. Um, but uh, I may have to add a couple skeletons in the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there you go. There you go. Well, you know, earlier we had on uh, Dylan Reynolds who has this um, EP called Radiation Sickness. And it's about like, uh, like uh, one of the songs is about Chernobyl. And it, it's all about, you know, these uh, things that can. But it sounded like he's into zombies, too. He mentioned a video game. Didn't he mention a video game that involves zombies? She's over there in the corner. Never mind. <laughs> but. Uh... Yes, I hear zombies. <laughs> What's that? Yes, I heard you with the zombies. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of video games with the zombies. Silent Hill was um, one of the first, I think, right? No, it wasn't particularly a zombie. It was. I, rem I don't. I don't know. I didn't play the game. He mentioned. Yeah. He mentioned a video game with I remember zombies. Remember the movies? But, see, I've never seen any of those. It was like just weird, dark, mysterious. Yeah, when we agreed to do the video like, um, or the movie night, we had to preview what it was about because we weren't too familiar with. The Silent Hill brand. Yeah, so we oh, watched I am. the movie. Yeah, I'm glad you are. <laughs> I, <laughs> I watched Silent that part Hill. of the movie, but yeah, the this video game was great. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, we were talking about that with Dylan too. The video games and uh, see, I'm not a, I'm complete, like I'm not a gamer at Me all. Either. I, I, the last time it's probably been 20 years since I played a video game, but the reason I've always avoided it since because the last time I played a video game. I um I was at a friend's house. They actually fell asleep. It was late. I think I started playing the game at like 9 p.m. And next thing I know, four hours has gone by. I'm yeah. looking at the clock and it's 1 a.m. And I made a decision in that moment. I said, because I'd been, you know, when I was a kid, I'd spend hours in front of the game system. And I just made a decision in that moment. I put that controller down and I said, I'm never doing this again. And I haven't. I haven't picked up a game controller since. It's just so psychologically addictive, yeah, it you know? it is so addictive. And then you start to get angry. Like, I only play The Witcher, and sometimes I'm, like, in the middle, and I feel myself with that, like, Ugh. I'm like, I got I to gotta quit. I don't want this. Yeah. But we have a lot of gamer musicians in the community. Like, yeah. you guys just had Mr. Goodbars, and he does yep. gaming. Axel Bailey does gaming, the drummer of Dead Harrison. And there's a lot of gamers. So I kind of think that this is a cool niche because we're appealing to both movie nerds and gaming nerds. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. The true. punks and, yep. you know, just a, a really cool vibe that is going to be tonight. Yeah. Now, um, 
at the uh, at the collective, there's uh, because you're you're talking about some of the information and and education of musicians. So you've got like um, levels, right? You've got like memberships yeah. people can sign up for. We have uh, several different memberships. So just the Midnight Creatives Collective has three membership levels. Patron being the one that gives you access to come in and co work with us as artists or you know whatever you're working on. We have writers too, um, musicians. So anybody could co work in a positive environment that just um is twenty five dollars a month and you can come in anytime that we're open which is tuesdays from 6 p.m to 11 p.m right now but mm -hmm. we are starting to think about expansion yeah yeah because as more people start mm -hmm. understanding what's going on yeah you know and then the next level is the rock star member which we have two rock star members right now at artist um who's a painter and her name is my art by kf keegan fitzgerald and we have a writer. Um, her name is Ellie Beach. She's an author and she does poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, and she also does cosplaying under Eowyn of the Shire. So those are our two rock star members. And then we have a VIP level membership, which covers everything and where I can use my skills learned as a music business manager and um, you know teach them how to basically start from the top, I mean, from the bottom and make it to the top <laughs> yeah. uh, with like their EPKs and their web presence and, you know, doing album covers and designing like logos for them and then getting them into video and media and um, signing them up for the music pros like BMI and ASCAP. Yeah. So that's what I do at that VIP level. And we have one uh, musician that I also manage. His uh, name is Rick Everhard and his band is called Six Minds Combined. It's a modern hip hop band. Um, it's a melodic hip hop band. Uh, he raps and he likes to partner with DJs and other musicians and do like, you know, collaborative things. So his first album's coming out and I'm helping him produce um, the album cover and the booklet. And Mr. Good Bars at the Toy Box Studio did all the production on the album itself. It's called Issue Zero. Cool. Six Minds Combined. So oh, okay. You have to keep your eye out for that one. But yeah, we'd love to have more VIP members, people who want to you know, grow their band as a business um, and want to reach that next level in their careers. It's for real people who have a lot of get up and go. If I had to say anything, Dead Harrison was basically my model for this. So yeah. everything I did to get Dead Harrison to the level they are now, I can use as a, a like an accomplishment and repeat it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, oh that's excellent. Yeah. I mean, I did it with my own band back in the day. So it's, yeah. you know, kind of just the logical steps of growing a business at this point. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So those are the three levels. And then if you want Terminus membership, we have kind of two different levels there. We have the um, regular entry level, uh, which is $20 a month. Or no, sorry, $15 a month. And then you get discounted tickets for Terminus. Yeah. Or if you want our VIP VA, pizza membership, which includes pizza with the bands, that's $20 a month. And then you get discounted tickets at the door. By the way, did I hear you correctly? Did you say that guy's name was Rick Everhard? Yes, it is Rick Everhard. <laughs> the 11-year-old boy in me loves that. Yes, oh, I asked him the first time I <laughs> knew his name. I was like, is that your real real name? And he's like, yes. That's awesome. And his middle name, I can't remember it, but it makes it even better. <laughs> Does oh, it really? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. well, he loves it, though. Well, shout out to Rick Everhard. Yeah. And it, it, it's not short for Richard either. It's, it's Frederick. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Um, so, Spelfie, I don't know much about your background. How did you get involved in, in all of this? And uh, I, I don't, did, did you already, have you known Eleanor and, and Andre for a long time? I or? met Eleanor and Andre six years ago, a little bit more than six years ago. And, um, and we, became friends really quickly. We got close really quickly. And um, I was in Nashua for a little bit, moved down to Massachusetts. And the two of them were two of the only people who came and visited me after I moved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, they're two of my best friends. And so after the passing of our friend Steve last year, um, we got together and we were talking about dreams and ideas that we had in the uh, realized that we had a lot of the same ideas, a lot of the same dreams and goals and mm -hmm. plans of things that we wanted to do. So I decided to just combine forces and yeah, do it together. Um, 
And do you all, well, let me ask you this. So are you a musician? Are you an artist? Are you like, what, what, what do you do creatively? Um, I, I sing, but I'm not in a band. I'm, oh, okay. I'm, I'm a chicken shit, but I am working oh. on a, starting a project. Sorry. It's all right. I caught, we're, we're passionate we're, we're about a, music. We're on a delay. I caught it. It's all good. <laughs> Sorry um, about that. That's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've, I've got a, a big passion for music. I grew up, um, music. I, I came out of the womb singing practically according to my parents. Yeah. I, they, they don't like to agree on much, but one of the things that they agree on is that I started singing before I started talking. Yeah. Um, so I've always loved music, always had a passion for music. Um, I've been asked what the meaning to life was, and I just say music. Without it, it there's, there's no point. Yeah. Everything is a wave. Everything vibrates. Some waves you can see, some you can hear. Yeah. And some you can feel. And just when you get good live music and you just close your eyes and you can feel the waves, the vibration, you're in a crowd of people and you can feel the energy coming off of all of those people who are also feeling the same vibrational energy that you are. Mm -hmm. It's a good way of describing it, yeah. Um, it's magic. It's has magic. good instincts when it comes to music too. She knows what bands go with what on a bill she's got really solid because of how she feels yeah i, I literally i just feel the music yeah and I, I, I don't just listen i feel yeah and, um and you mentioned so you sing but you're not you're have you been in a band um i have i've i did like band classes i did chorus classes and all that stuff growing up yeah i, I grew up um my dad's very religious i grew up in the church i grew up uh in children's choir and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, very sour to organized religion. Um, so I no longer do that. But that was the one thing that I enjoyed about church was singing. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. A lot of musicians, um, that's how they, that's how they start out learning to sing is, um, I shouldn't say a lot, but I've just heard a lot of, a lot of people who don't, aren't particularly religious, but they, but because they came from a religious background, that's something that they did get out of it, at least, you know, an exposure to, to singing and choirs and choruses and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Yeah. According to my parents, at uh, six months old, I started singing Jesus Loves Me with my dad. <laughs> yeah. And then the first thing that I said, um, I mean, kind of egotistical, but at the same time, not because it wasn't just the word I, it was a whole phrase. I told my dad, I love him. I said, I love you. So I, I guess the story is, is my mom would put me in my little baby swing in front of the door. My dad would come home from work. And the first thing he would do is put his stuff down and say, I love you. And so oh. he walked in the door. And the first thing I said, I love you. Oh, that's cute. Um, very nice. Very nice. So that, that was the, that was my 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 story of I started talking before I started. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I started singing. Started before singing before I started talking. Yeah. And, but Jesus loves me and <laughs> won't catch me singing that ever again. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you never know. But probably. Well, uh, what about uh, you could um, the songs? It's funny. There's. Uh, what was I? What did I hear the other night that I haven't heard in a long time that Jesus is just all right by the Doobie Brothers? It was like, I don't think they're religious, though. <laughs> <laughs> Some people sing about Jesus without being actually religious. It's interesting. But I say Jesus a lot every day. Yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it could be a phrase. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, let's do this. I think we should play another Dead Harrison song and then we'll come back and talk some more. Uh, do we have a... Uh, actually, I... All right, maybe I'll be selfish. I really like Terror Grinder. I was oh, gonna, no. You read my mind. Oh, okay. So I'm not being selfish. That's good. You're not. All right. It's a good one. It's a good song. I think we should play Different that one. Different from Beach Zombies. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Um, and this is... You and Sean sing this together, right? Is yes. this the one? Yeah. Selfie, what are you holding? There was a question in the in the chat room if that's an axolotl. Axolotl, yeah. Axolotl plushie. Yeah, it's an axolotl. This is my ESA, my emotional support axolotl. <laughs> His name is Sausage. He, he's a, a gift from a, a friend. He's very cute. He is. Oh, very it's, good. It's much better than the, the, the actual live emotional support animal that I used to have because I don't have to feed this one <laughs> right. or take it out for a walk. Right. I right. don't have to worry about cleaning up messes and it can or go getting anywhere. a doggy sitter. You don't have to worry about somebody giving you a hard time about it. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> if they piss me off enough, I can just hit them with it. 
Well, yeah. I need this for my emotional support. Well, that's true. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I like this. <laughs> Try not to get arrested for assault. That's right. I wouldn't. That's right. <laughs> All right, here we go. I, I, I got it. This is Terror Garden, <laughs> and this is Dead Harrison. Check this out.
Yeah, I definitely think that is my favorite Dead Harrison song, Terror Grinder. The band is Dead Harrison. We have Andre Dumont here from Dead Harrison. We have Eleanor and Spelfy here as well. And we've been talking about the Midnight Creators Collective and uh, Terminus Underground. And uh, for people just joining us, we should remind them what you've got going on tonight there. So tonight is our first music and movie night. We're going to be premiering a Silent Hill fan parody film uh, with puppets. So it's called Silent Foul. And it is basically the um, Ryan Lockhart is the filmmaker and the performer and actress. And she is the trans woman. And this is her coming out film and uh, night. So she is going to be doing a rap performance. She's an amazing rap battle artist and a rapper. And so she's going to be doing some of that performing as well as premiering her show. And we also have the Negans, a Walking Dead um, parody band themselves who... um, they are like punk rock and misfit style. So a lot of fun, a lot of woes, a lot of haze, a lot of jumping up and down. It's going to be really fun. So um, we are doing a little bit differently. $10 suggested donation at the door. It is still 21 plus. Um, bring your candy and a chair to sit on and come and watch a movie and have some fun with us. I'm sure. Cur- I'm sorry. It's, oh. I should say the time. It's, oh, yeah. Door yeah. start at eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is important. That is important. <laughs> yes. I'm curious, how does something like like a, a, an event like this, which is so unique, like how does something like this happen? Does she approach you because she thinks that this would be a good venue for that? Or do you approach her? Or how does that happen? Um, I saw her post online. She was like, yeah, check out my movie. I was like, do you want to have a viewing? Oh, OK. Like, yeah, kind of <laughs> like, all right, cool. And so I talked to, to these two here. I was like, yeah. Why don't we put on a movie night at Terminus and show movies made by people that we know? Yeah, yeah. And we had gotten a couple of people who are filmmakers um, interested early on, and they came by um, the open house. One of them was um, Matt Martino, who's done some B-horror films with our friend um, and resident cannibal Greg Abaddon. So um, we had him come by a couple times. And then... Uh, Rod Weber, who is the documentary filmmaker for Vermin Supreme, had come oh, no by. Kidding. Yeah, so yeah. we started talking about, you know, yeah, that there could be a possibility to work with film people here too, given the space. And um, this is the first time we're trying it. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Are you um, are you doing something with Vermin Supreme or? or are you um, every time he comes to New Hampshire, uh, our house is literally his. Um, Campaign, campaign house headquarters. headquarters. Okay. So yeah, whenever he comes here, if he comes with his ponies, they're in our yard <laughs> in Nashua. Um, last year he came and did like the holiday stroll with us and the ponies. It was our first introduction to it, and then you know I'll be doing something with him if he wants to tour uh, New England around. Oh here. wow! So yeah, I think something might happen in September, but it's still up in the air. He actually brings ponies. Um, sometimes, yep. He does. I didn't realize. That. Yeah, wow. <laughs> they're like these mini, um, mini Shetland ponies. Yeah, they're really cute. Yeah, how sturdy. Do, how does he? So, what he transports them here in a truck? Yeah. They have friends. They have friends in a trailer. That, yeah, yeah, trailer. yeah. It's um, interesting. You know, they're from a farm, and these are friends and colleagues of Vermin's. Yeah donate the ponies wow i know it is so cool i love vermin i i've, I've interviewed him a, a few times actually i think jenny had introduced me to him originally um yeah. but but yeah i've interviewed him a few times over the years and uh no very very fun very fascinating i didn't realize though he actually uh travels uh sometimes with actual uh, ponies I oh, mean, yeah i mean talk about committing to the bit wow <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> I never really knew what kind of ponies. And I, in my mind, I was thinking like just the regular size ponies. But these are little mini ones. So yeah. I think it's probably much easier to transport them. Probably. Probably. Wow, that's wild. But imagine my like surprise when I looked out my window and saw ponies grazing in my yard. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> starstruck. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I, I can do imagine. get starstruck. Even though I'm, I've been in this industry since 1999, I still get starstruck. Yeah. And it's mostly weirdly by political people i'm like <laughs> but right, right. <laughs> even stars like even musicians sometimes i got to meet my favorite band gear recently they came and played terminus who are they gear how do you how do you spell g-i-r-i-h it? oh okay and they're here from they're in manchester they're a melodic post-metal band um with huge huge cabs and amps yeah. um 
And I was introduced to them in the winter. Um, Andre's friend John introduced them to us. And I wrote to them. And I was like, oh, my God, I really love this band. It's amazing. Never expected to hear back from him. And then like they're like, hey, can we do a show? And I was like, oh, my God, yeah. Oh, wow. So I get to meet a lot of amazing, amazing people. Yeah, yeah. We all do. Oh, and there's... Uh... <laughs> We should mention too. Speaking of interesting uh, people, uh, Green Jello or Green Jelly, I never, I don't know what to call yes. them anymore. So I've been in <laughs> touch with William Manspeaker, and yes. he has arranged a 130 day t- pool noodle bus tour. So a pool noodle bus, a bus filled with pool noodles, painted with green jelly and green Jello um, logos, is traveling the country right now. They're in Calgary. Had a little bit of a problem getting over the border with the I bus. I did watch that. Yes. <laughs> I didn't, it wasn't the bus. It was him. <laughs> well, I didn't know about this. I missed this. This got yeah, passed. He got, yeah. yeah, he got turned away at the Canadian border. He got back through. Oh. He had to go. He had to fly <laughs> yeah. back to Los Angeles, go to court, get a piece of paper that said he had his name searched and he's never been a felon. Wow. Yeah. And fly that back to Cal- to Calgary to get into Canada and be permitted to come in. And he made it to the concert. Wow. But it was an insane thing watching him like emergently fly to LA. He has unbounded energy. (laughs) Wow. He's very much about showing people how to be a winner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So he'll be here in this direction um, at Terminus on August 27th. Yeah. That's a Tuesday show. So, you know, if you got to work, maybe take the day off because it's going to be just so much fun yeah and we're gonna try to do um a parade through the city with the pool noodles and oh yeah yeah oh wow yeah so we're gonna try to have a punk rock parade yeah oh very cool very cool did not know about the parade aspect yeah yeah Yeah. i haven't put the event up yet but i will shortly so yeah excellent excellent and uh (laughs) anything new with in the world of dad harrison that we should know about My brain is not <laughs> able to. Uh, right now, no. I think we have a show coming up over at Terminus next month. Okay. Yeah, they're playing with Vigil, um, and Swarm of Eyes, okay. and a new band called Tech Slave. Um, I had the show set up for Vigil, and they said to me, "Well, why is Dead Harrison not on this bill? We need Dead Harrison on oh. this bill." So we put them on the bill, um, and they do have. They're playing the. Um, music festival on august 31st so Excellent. all the bands that we know like i said my brain is just like i just yeah. wait for it to come and then i go that's why i'm the manager so i can keep everything in line <laughs> that we need to do because you know it's a lot we do a lot yeah, yeah. We're, we're constantly moving there's a lot of moving pieces we have a lot of really great volunteers yeah. who i actually wanted to shout out today some of the people that have helped us like just out of the goodness of their heart and feeling for the scene mm. um we have katie red our sound witch Brian Melanson, who's really technical, tech savvy, and has been helping us. Axel Bailey, who's um, doing our videos and our interviews with Spelfy for the artists and musicians. Chris Barton, um, who has helped us with sound and parking detail. Rick Everhard, he's been helpful. He wants to be our bouncer and um, you know help us out in that regard. Eric and Palomini, he's bounced the door before too um, ah, yes. with Stacy, his girlfriend. So everybody who's just like picked up and just helped us in any way that they can just to be part of it has yeah. been amazing. I mean, I'm sure there's so many more people that I'm not even mentioning. <laughs> I don't know if you have. Yeah, um, I mean, we've got um, Bryant Geller. He's yeah. one of our um, our patron members. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does a lot to help me get to meetings and stuff like that as far as giving me rides. He's always there. He's like, you need something, let me know. I, I've got oh, you. Cool. I will support any which way I can. He's down to support this, whatever, like, he doesn't come to Terminus shows and stuff like that because he works on Saturday nights. Cause he, uh, he's a, a dealer over at Gate City Casino. Oh, okay. Um, so he he can only request so many nights off for concerts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a casino in Nashua. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple. Are there? Yeah. 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 There's going to be one more soon in the mall, too. Oh, I'll be damned. Yeah. 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 I, didn't, I had no idea. I mean, I'm not a gambler, but yeah, I just didn't realize that. You know, for years, I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea there was one on South Willow Street. I was I was oblivious. Oh yeah. Apparently, it's been there forever. Yeah, I didn't I, realize I've there was either. one either. Yeah, yeah. Not until not... you just mentioned it right now. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. The only thing Manchester I kind of want to gamble at is bingo. I want to play bingo for some reason. Really? Yeah. yeah. 
mostly because I want to try to get them as a client. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, we are running out of time. Uh, please um, plug the event uh, you have tonight and uh, anything anybody else should know about how to find you online, all keep right. up with everything that you're doing, all the all the pertinence. So we have um, the Midnight Creatives Collective is on Instagram and Facebook. We have a group as well as a page. And then uh, we also have Terminus Underground as a page. So you can go on and find out all the shows from there. We always put the events through the Midnight Creatives Collective and share them to the Terminus page. And um, we also have a website, but um, it's in process. But that should be coming soon. We just encourage people to come over and experience it. You know, you can see what we do online, but the key is coming. Um, and we're at 134 Haines Street. It is an industrial mill building set off the road. It's a little hard to find. We like it that way. That's why we're underground. <laughs> so if you type 200 Haines Street into your GPS, you're more likely to find us. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's the secret. We're living <laughs> a little secrets here. Yeah. But yeah, please come to the shows. We're going to have the next one after this is um, August 17th with the Whole Loaf, um, Earthmark, Alana Corvette and Egg with an exclamation point. So that's a really groovy 60s style psychedelic rock night. Um, and prior to that, we're going to be shooting Six Minds Combined's first music video. Oh. So people are also welcome to come. We want the public to come and be part of it. It's a house party. So if you're you know interested in what we're trying to do, check out the address on our website um, or on Facebook rather. And you can check that information out there too. Very cool, very cool. And we should remind people, too, Jenny's artwork is currently hanging there. Yes, it yes. is. Yes. And you can see more of it at jencoffee.com, J-E-N-N-C-O-F-F-E-Y.com. Yes, very good. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, all three of you, for coming in today. This Thanks has been wonderful. Us, Matt. Absolutely. It's good to see you guys. Yes, yes, thank you. And speaking of great bands, I think we'll close with, uh, what do you think, a little bit of uh, Hurricane Hell from uh, Dead Harrison? Hell yeah. <laughs> sound, sound good? We'll close with this. And uh, that's it for us for now. We'll talk to y'all a little bit later. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh